Chapter One of Our Little German Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Christmas. Don't look there. Now it's done, cried Bertha. It was two nights before Christmas. Bertha was in the big living room with her mother and older sister. Each sat as close as possible to the candlelight, and was busily working on something in her lap. But, strange to say, they did not face each other. They were sitting back to back. What an unsociable way to work, we think. Is that the way Germans spend the evenings together? No, indeed. But Christmas was near at hand, and the air was brimful of secrets. Bertha would not let her mother discover what she was working for her for all the world, and the little girl's mother was preparing surprises for each of the children. All together, the greatest fun of the year was getting ready for Christmas. Mother, will you make some of those lovely cakes this year? asked Bertha's sister Gretchen. Certainly, my child, it would not be Christmas without them. Early tomorrow morning, Bertha and you must shell and chop the nuts. I will use the freshest eggs and will beat the dough as long as my arms will let me. Did you always know how to make those cakes, Mamma? asked Bertha. My good mother taught me when I was about your age, my dear. You may watch me to-morrow, and perhaps you will learn how to make them. It is never too early to begin to learn to cook. When the city girls get through school, they go away from home and study housekeeping, don't they? asked Gretchen. Yes, and many girls who don't live in the cities but I hardly think you will ever be sent away. We are busy people here in our little village, and you will have to be contented with learning what your mother can teach you. I shall be satisfied with that, I know. But listen, I can hear father and Hans coming. Then put up your work, children, and set the supper table. The girls jumped up and hurriedly put the presents away. It did not take long to set the supper table, for the meals in this little home were very simple, and supper was the simplest of all. A large plate of black bread and a pitcher of sour milk were brought by the mother, and the family gathered around the table. The bread wasn't really black, of course. It was dark brown and very coarse. It was made of rye meal. Bertha and Gretchen had never seen any white bread in their lives, for they had never yet been far away from their own little village. Neither had their brother Hans. They were happy, healthy children. They all had blue eyes, rosy cheeks, and fair hair, like their father and mother. "'You don't know what I've got for you, Hans,' said Bertha, laughing and showing a sweet little dimple in her chin. Hans bent down and kissed her. He never could resist that dimple, and Bertha was his favorite sister. "'I don't know what it is, but I do know that it must be something nice,' said her brother. When the supper-table had been cleared, the mother and girls took out their sewing again, while Hans worked at some wood-carving. The father took an old violin from its case and began to play some of the beautiful airs of Germany. When he came to the watch on the Rhine, the mother's work dropped from her hands as she and the children joined in the song that stirs every German heart. Oh, dear, it seems as though Christmas Eve never would come, sighed Bertha, as she settled herself for sleep beside her sister. It was quite a cold night, but they were cosy and warm. Why shouldn't they be? They were covered with a down feather bed. 
the mother had the same kind of cover on her own bed and so had hans but christmas eve did come at last although it seemed so far off to bertha the night before hans and his father brought in the bough of yew tree and it was set up in the living room the decorating came next tiny candles were fastened on all the twigs sweetmeats and nuts were hung from the branches how beautiful how beautiful exclaimed the children when it was all trimmed and they walked around it with admiring eyes none of the presents were placed on the tree for that is not the fashion in germany each little gift had been tied up in paper and marked with the name of the one for whom it was intended when everything was ready there was a moment of quiet while the candles were being lighted then bertha's father began to give out the presents and there was a great deal of laughing and joking as the bundles were opened there was a new red skirt for bertha her mother had made it for she knew her child was very fond of pretty dresses besides this she had a pair of warm woolen mittens which gretchen had knit for her hans had made and carved a doll's cradle for each of the girls everybody was happy and contented they sang songs and cracked nuts and ate the christmas cakes to their hearts content i think i like the ones shaped like gnomes the best said hans they have such comical little faces do you know every time i go out in the forest it seems as though i might meet a party of gnomes hunting for gold i like the animal cakes best said bertha the deer are such graceful creatures and i like to bite off the horns and legs one at a time a long time ago said their father they used to celebrate christmas a little different from the way we now do the presents were all carried to a man in the village who dressed himself in a white robe and a big wig made of flax he covered his face with a mask and then went from house to house the grown people received him with great honours he called for the children and gave them the presents their parents had brought to him when these presents were all given according to the way the children had behaved during the year if they had been good and tried hard they had the gifts they deserved but if they had been naughty and disobedient it was not a happy time for them i don't believe the children we're very fond of him cried hans they must have been too much afraid of him that is true said his father but now let us play some games christmas comes but once a year and you have all been good children the room soon rang with the shouts of hans and his sisters they played blind man's buff and other games their father took part in all of them as though he were a boy again the good mother looked on with pleasant smiles bedtime came only too soon but just before the children said good night the father took hans on one side and talked seriously yet lovingly with him he told the boy of the faults he must still fight against. He spoke also of the improvement he had made during the year. At the same time, the mother gave words of kind advice to her little daughters. She told them to keep up good courage, to be busy and patient in the year to come. "'My dear little girls,' she whispered as she kissed them, "'I love to see you happy in your play.' but the good lord who cares for us has given us all some work to do in this world be faithful in doing yours End of chapter one